Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Fish. This is the mostly weekly series where I answer your questions that you leave on Discord. Don't forget to join if you have a question for a future episode. Got a lot of stuff to cover this week, so smack a like on the video if you're going to enjoy it. That massively, massively helps appease the unhinged monstrosity that is the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into your questions. Logan Richardson asks, thoughts on the SG custom colors? Yeah, so this was cool from Gibson. This kind of came out of nowhere. We talked before about the Les Paul 50s and 60s custom color collections basically Gibson added a whole bunch of vibrant plain and figure top two-tone Les Pauls to the main production lineup featuring colors that before were limited to only the custom shop or to limited runs. A ton of really cool finishes actually. I'll leave a link to that video on the cards and in the description you can check out after this video. But now it's the SG's turn and so the SG custom colors are the same between the modern collection SG standard and the original collection SG standard 61. The key differences between the two real quick are the 61 has a slim taper neck profile and ABR bridge vintage tuners, 60s burst buckers, and a smaller pick guard, while the non-61 has a rounded profile, Nashville bridge, 490R, 490T pickups, and the larger Batwing pick guard. We have silver mist, classic white, translucent teal, TV yellow, Cardinal Red Burst and Pelham Blue Burst. The last two you might recognize, they've actually been a part of Epiphone's Prophecy series for a while. Interestingly, only plain tops, no figure tops. I'm guessing they're saving that for the SG Modern. We'll talk about that in a second. Silver Mist is particularly cool. It reminds me of the SG Patrick Stump of Fallout Boy used to play. And since it was never an official signature, this is kind of a nod to that guitar. Gibson does a lot of interesting bright color experiments with Epiphone. There was the whole Muse series, Sweetwater exclusive Viper Blue series. They did the Les Paul Modern figure tops with Epiphone first for a couple of years before bringing that over to the Gibson USA line. So it's cool they're starting to do more of that on the Gibson side of things, not just Les Pauls, but now SGs as well. And just saying, Schechter has shown that bright, interesting colors work really well in the shapes like the V, the Explorer. So more of this, please. A Firebird custom color collection would be sick. The Firebird works really well with some of these colors like Metallic Palin Blue or even some of the Flame tops. Right now you can only get a flame top firebird from AliExpress and uh, yeah, f that. So yes, fully in favor of more PRS style custom color collections. I would love to see them on the underappreciated shapes and the underappreciated models like the future revamped Les Paul Tribute for example. So many people write the tribute off I genuinely don't understand. It's like just the bare amount of wooden electronics that makes a Les Paul a Les Paul. No extra sh** added, it's sick. Now imagine that in Blueberry Burst Flame with a natural back, all open pore satin. Like, f yes dude, come on. We know there is a refresh coming because that and the Les Paul Studio have completely dropped off Sweetwater's website. They haven't just been put on back order, which is what normally happens when they're out of stock. A Les Paul Modern Studio has been confirmed already, and I'll note at this point, the SG Tribute has dropped off the Sweetwater site as well. So a refresh of those is likely imminent too. We'll see a lot more around NAM time, probably, CEO says RG has been teasing an upcoming SG Supreme, so I'd guess, much like with the Les Paul, the whole SG Modern Collection is getting a much needed revamp. Now include wheel weights or a thicker strap in the box to solve the neck dive and we're golden. Anyways, those are just my thoughts on the SG Custom Color Collection and thoughts on a bunch of other sh** too, I guess. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What are you thinking about these new colors, the future trajectory of the Gibson SG? Are you thinking of picking up any or nah, not interesting to you? Let me know what you're thinking down below. Speaking of custom colors though, look at this nuclear green from Ridge's new Hyperlime collection. Let's take a quick second to talk about Ridge who have sponsored today's video. Ridge is redefining the wallet in a way that makes sense for modern life. If you're a regular viewer, you've heard me talk about Ridge a lot on the channel, absolutely love their products and they're running a huge holiday promotion. They're not just a sponsor, this is the one that I actually use. I made the switch a couple of years ago and I cannot imagine going back to the old bulky traditional style. I love the sleek modern form factor that can hold all your cards and fit into your front pocket. The durable plates made of aluminum, titanium, titanium and carbon fiber or RFID blocking so scammers can't steal your information and each wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee. Ridge has a ton of colors and styles to choose from. I've been showing some of my current favorites. They make for amazing holiday gifts, especially if you're struggling with what to get for those hard to shop for friends. They have over 80,000 five-star reviews. So if you want to see why so many people are upgrading to Ridge and love it, heading over to ridge.com slash agafish. They're running a huge sale for a limited time, get up to 30% off. My link will also be in the description. If you use it, 
you can enter your email or number for a free chance to win a Ridge bundle worth $4,000. No purchase necessary. Clicking also helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're checking that out, let's get back into guitars. Turkey Chow, Purple Gang Leader, asks, Hey Agu, have you seen the new limited edition Adam Jones Murphy Lab V? Yeah, so the Flying V Adam Jones has been playing live for about a year is now available for pre-order. Just like with his Les Paul Custom Run, they're starting off with a Murphy Lab version. Limited to just 50 units, it shares a lot of the same specs with Adam Jones' 1979 Les Paul Custom signatures, non-weight relieved mahogany bodies since Adam Jones loves his heavy instruments. Totally with him on that. Bound ebony fingerboard with mother of pearl block inlays, full control layout, reverse mounted Gibson custom bucker in the neck, Seymour Duncan DDJ in the bridge. Then it's got custom exclusive artwork on the truss rod cover and an aged reverse silver burst finish. Most controversially, it's got a split design headstock borrowed from the original Gibson Futura, the precursor to the Explorer. I know it's confusing because there have been a couple of designs with the Futura name, including this Norlin era abomination that would later go on to become the Corvus, which is also an abomination in its own right. But we move a couple of prototypes were made from 1957 to 1958 with that headstock before it was scrapped in favor of the Explorer that we know today. The Adam Jones Flying V is 20 grand, and I've seen a lot of people online complain about the price, but but like, it's literally in the name. This is not aimed at the normal working musician. This is a limited 50 unit collector's piece. Fingers crossed that means we'll see a non-collector's edition production version too at the USA or Epiphone price tiers. Speaking of 20 grand though, 20 grand million percent of viewers are actually not subscribed. Go ahead and do that now and hit the bell for notifications. That way you don't miss any new uploads from me. But for that $20,000 price tag, it comes with some special edition case candy, a special leather strap with a hand cast two-headed dog brooch developed by Alex Kuno. Jones is really into art of all forms, whether it's music or visual in the case of his custom art collection Epiphones. I like how he's always finding ways of incorporating other forms of art into his signature guitar experience. That's not something that happens too much these days. Side note, before they started doing all these Adam Jones signatures, I had no idea that he and Tool were so influential in both the music and the gear space. Even Diesel credits Adam Jones and his loyal fan base for putting them on the map. Anyways, back to the Flying V. Now, it has been pointed out there is a bit of irony at play here. Kind of looks like a Dean V, doesn't it? Just recently, Dean had to drop the V, a staple in their lineup since 1977 after legal disputes over the body shape with Gibson. And now the closest thing in production to the Dean V, more so than even the new Dean Vengeance, is this Gibson Flying V. Life can be so poetic. So I don't think it was intentional, but because of the timing, Gibson still deserves this award in shithousery. But so here's where I'm at with this one. I kind of hate everything about it on an individual level. Like I'm not even a Flying V guy to begin with. Then you add this ugly offset split headstock that Gibson rightfully abandoned decades ago. The giant raised Gibson logo makes it even worse. The pickup selector may as well be in a different planetary system. The reverse silver burst is personally not appealing, but put it all together, it's so fucking wacky. It's kind of very cool. I really want to try it at least, not for the 20 grand that they want for the Murphy Lab Collector's Edition, obviously, but if they drop an affordable Epiphone version, though judging from Greeny's price, we'll have to see how affordable that actually is, but we move. Anyways, it's cool because while I personally think this might be one of the ugliest things I've seen in a while, I do like how it's a throwback to different Gibson eras, you know, combining 70 specs and silver bursts ish with a headstock from the late 50s golden era design archives but at the same time it's not really a reissue of anything they've tried new things with the looks with the control layout it's a throwback to the spirit of unhinged super polarizing shape and color experimentation gibson used to do just like with the modern the corvus the s1 the ls6 people are either going to love or hate the Adam Jones Flying V. There will be no bystanders in this debate. Conceptually, I'd love to see more of this from Gibson, mixing and matching different elements from its past into crazy new models. It's what Fender does with their Parallel Universe and Alternate Reality series, which are some of their most interesting production models. And Gibson has a ton of hidden or unrealized or forgotten ideas from its design archives. Could you imagine? They take this split headstock, throw it on a limited run Epiphone Parallel Universe SG, like, hey, had different decisions been made in 1957 to go forward with this headstock, 
this could have been the SG standard that we know today. Or the company might have disappeared into financial oblivion because this headstock is awful. But you know what I mean. Firebird style neck through on a Les Paul special with a never before seen headstock from the archives. Gibson has such a rich legacy of released and non-released design elements to choose from. An annual Epiphone alternate reality series would be so sick. And you know Gibson loves a good limited series for the collectors. Anyways, going a bit off the rails here with what could be rather than what is. So here's where I'm going to stop and throw it to you. What are your thoughts on the Adam Jones Flying V Collector's Edition? You love it? You hate it? You want to see an Epiphone version? Or nah, just throw that whole design in the bin. Let me know what you're thinking down below. And now it's time to do a quick fire round on new releases. Keep these on your radar. Harley Benton has dropped some new tube amps, the Tube 5, the Tube 15, and the Tube 30. These are classic rock focused. The adorable 5 watt has a tone and volume control, single 12 AX7 in the preamp section, single 6V6 in the power section for 129 euros. The 15 watt has more controls, built in reverb, three 12 AX7s, and two EL84 power tubes. 219 euros. They've made combo versions of these for a while, which are insanely high value because they come equipped with Celestian speakers. I think the Tube 15 combo is like 300 bucks or something insane like that. And you can get a full 212 Celestian V30 cab for 300 bucks as well. Ridiculous. And then the Tube 30 has a full four EL84 tubes, dual inputs, bright switch, and built-in reverb, all for about 450 euros. It's a completely new addition to the lineup. There's no combo version. And most importantly, it appears to light up red. Oh <laughs> yeah, these are almost guaranteed to be from the same factory. They make Monoprice's stage right amps and cabs, literally same layout, same specs. This is great for Europeans because while the stage right stuff is easy to get in the States, it's a little more difficult in the EU. With Harley Benton, you get the same super high value budget amps, plus more product variety and with free shipping from Tillman. Now it's time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week and the douchebaggery award goes to Agafish. I mean, listen, a win is a win. Rusty Todd 10 asks the new Epi Kirk Greenies dropped thoughts on that headstock though. Yeah, I actually talked about the Epiphone Kirk Hammett Greenie in a previous video. So this is actually a great segue into the next block since last episode of Ask Fish. Oh man, it's been a long time. Let's recap in case you missed it. Did a full breakdown on Epiphone's recent releases. Talked about Greenie, the first made in China Epiphone to have a proper open book headstock. Talked about the Purple Flying V, Jared James Nichols' new Blues Power signature. Talked about pricing. Talked about Epiphone's quality. Metallica actually using Epiphone guitars live and what it all means for Epiphone going forward. Then I uploaded a demo of Mark Tremonti's long-awaited PRS MT100 amp, the 100 watt version of the already very impressive MT15. It was five years in development specifically to nail the Dumble-esque crunch channel. Then it's got Fender style cleans, rectifier style high gain infused with a Bogner-like mid-range. The thing is sick. It's like an old school boutique amp. It's all about the tones. I did a quick little mod video putting the new Richard Z pickups into one of my signature prototypes then use the Fishmans to do a quick speed run, putting together a Rammstein style demo track. The whole thing, the project, the track, it all turned out super sick. Talked about what else Gibson has been up to recently, specifically the revamped Les Paul Modern collection, the Les Paul Modern Light, the custom colors, what it all means for the future of Gibson guitars. Unboxed a couple of pieces of new gear, including a Kirk Hammett signature model I'm personally more excited about than Greeny, a traditional style seven string Strat thing from Japan, and my new Gibson project that came in well, less than ideal condition. Still trying to figure out how that even happened. Links to all those in the cards and in the description. And lastly, shorts have been absolutely blown up. I've been uploading those daily. It's been a lot of fun to figure out, to cover a variety of topics in bite-sized form, and you know, just share a general enthusiasm about guitar with you guys every day in a way that's just not possible with long form content and the way that I like to make and edit videos. If they're not your thing, totally get it. The long form content isn't going anywhere. Just letting you know it exists if you want to check that out. And also welcome to all the new viewers who have come from there. And that will do it for this episode of Ask a Fish. Massive shout out to my patrons. Their names are up on the screen right now. Consider joining them if you want to support what I do and get bonus extras or pick up some limited edition Christmas merch. All that really helps out the channel. Social media, Discord, and affiliate links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.